Hello my dear friends welcome back to the channel and this is your friend Dr Suresh and me I got a very important question in the comment section on my video of pulp capping which is widely appreciated and I hope that many of the students who are confused about pulp capping they should surely check it out the question is that why don't we do pulp capping in primary teeth which is many a times a very important question for most of the exams whether it is an indian entrance exam or whether it is an nbde or canadian or middle east exam also so before understanding that why don't we do pulp capping in primary teeth let us first go through some of the important aspects of shedding process when it comes to shedding of deciduous teeth there are two cells which are involved that is odontoblast and odontoclast and everybody thinks that mostly it is the odontoclast which are only involved but it is a very important mcq ex indian entrance exam that both odontoblast and odontoclast are involved in shedding process because there is also a moment of repair and then there is uh, you know resorption by odontoclast so odontoblast i'm sure everybody remembers because they reside in the pulp and they originate from the ectomesen camel cells eventually from the tooth bud and it is important for the formation of dentine but you have to remember one point here that odontoplast originate from pre odontoblast and i will tell you why this point is important odontoclasts are the second important cells which are uh, very active in shedding process and they originate from monocyte of the tissue so if you remember the defense cells we have macrophages uh, and you know monocyte so basically these are from the tissue and they convert to odontoclast and they are mostly involved in resorption of tooth and the bone and if a cell which is meant to resorb the tooth then it is called as odontoclast some cells which are involved in resorption of the bone they are called as osteoclast the third important point which uh, i am sure you may remember when you read the dentine is there is something called as predentine now predentine is the layer which is just beside the pulp below which the odontoblast cells stay and through the predentine the dentinal tubules pass and they enter the rest of the dentine you have to know that the pulp is separated from this layer of the uh, dentine that is the predentine now another most important thing which is involved in the pulp capping is the use of calcium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide has a long success uh, of track record when it comes to the pulp capping and the few important points which you have to remember is the ph of calcium hydroxide is 11 to 12 that means it is highly alkaline and when you apply it on a tissue it causes necrosis in the topmost layer but it also stimulates the cells to deposit dentine now coming to the question that why don't we do pulp capping in primary teeth the answer you generally tend to give is it causes internal resorption in deciduous teeth of course you can use it in the permanent teeth and now this is where the confusion actually lies that when you use it in permanent teeth it is successful and when it is used in primary teeth it is not successful and the question is why there are many reasons involved in it the first reason to remember here is that the calcium hydroxide is quite alkaline and generally the odontoclast are formed because of macrophages but when you apply the calcium hydroxide in deciduous teeth what the research has found is that the pre odontoblast which are actually responsible for formation of odontoblast they end up forming the odontoclast so you have a cell which was meant for repair but because of this alkaline property or toxic property of the calcium hydroxide they end up converting the pre odontoblast to odontoclast which then ultimately resorbs the two structure and causing the internal resorption the second reason what research has mentioned that generally there is a time frame when the resorption of the root start and the shedding process starts but what the research has found that when you apply calcium hydroxide in the primary teeth they increase the activation of odontoclast that means suppose for example if you needed 3 months for activation of odontoclast and because of the calcium hydroxide it ends up getting activated within 1 month 
or one and a half month so that is just an example to explain it so basically the time for activation reduces and you end up having resorption in the primary teeth the last reason what research has mentioned that the calcium hydroxide can damage the predentine if you remember in our earlier slides i mentioned that the predentine separates the pulp from rest of the dentine and this is actually a protective layer now what happens that this layer prevents the osteoclast from coming and resorbing the dentine and because of the calcium hydroxide this predentine layer gets damaged and the osteoodontoclast can easily enter the dentine and cause the resorption leading to internal resorption now overall most of the practitioners don't do pulp capping in deciduous teeth because of these reasons and hence it is unpredictable but if you actually check the guidelines by american academy of pediatric dentistry you can still do pulp capping in primary teeth but then you will have to do a follow up so my dear friends i hope that explains the question in a very simple way and helps you to understand this point better so i will see you again in my next video please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do share this video with your friends if you think it will be helpful for them